Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Mount Holly Township Council meeting of June 8, 2015, at 7 p.m. At the call to order of the uh, meeting, do we have a uh, roll call? Calling the roll, Mr. Brown. Present. Mr. DeFalco. Present. Mr. Jones is absent. Ms. Sykes is absent. Mr. Thiessen. Here. There is a quorum. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could you please stand for the name of the silence, please? This meeting is being held pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act of 1974, and all provisions of that act have been met with adequate notice of this meeting having been published in the Township's two official newspapers on January 12, 2015, published in the Township's website, and posted on the official Township Bulletin Board. Thank you, Communications? George, Eric, Nikki, Blue. Yeah. All right, I, I just want to bring up something uh, real quick. I know that uh, some of you here this evening are here to discuss issues as it pertains to the restoration of the dam over at uh, the dam, where we all live around. We've got three lakes over there, one of them is mud pile right now. It stinks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the update uh, as of right now, and I do I said you guys have some questions, but as far as a quick uh, dirty review, is we're meeting with the New Jersey Department of Protection and Dam Safety on the 15th. Um, we've had a lot of conversation with them in order to secure financing, in order to restore the dam um, at a reasonable amount of money in order to get that back to a, a working um, body of water that's over there. Um, they, in their best effort um, on the phone, uh, think that we may be able to do so in the, the tune of about $200,000 as opposed to the original um, $1.2 million to the $1 million that was the original estimate for the restoration. But that being, that brings it to a, um, a functional dam with water uh, filled in that second lake. It does not include the restoration of the walkway that goes across it. Um, I think that's something that can be at the phase two, but I think right now in order to preserve the lake which was there, uh, we first need to repair the dam and get the water levels back where they are, and then once we can secure additional funding, go ahead and think about creating an additional walkway that goes across that. I know there's one for the down the next walkway um, area, but I think we need to uh, walk the road run, and also we need to be able to secure financing, which is reasonable and at the period of time, in order to get those property values where they're supposed to be, as well as obviously the, the beauty of the second lake, which was over there. So. Um, again, that's a quick and dirty. I'll know more on the 15th in regards to that lake. I know it's been uh, quite a while since it's been drained by DEP and the fishing group that are out there. We, all be, we are working, we haven't forgot, and I can tell you, um, you know, uh, with you know, my apologies, the town itself probably has been lacking when it comes to communication to its residents over by the park. And we do apologize, but we have not stopped looking at uh, resources and ways to fund and restore that dam that uh, we all know is over there. So, you know, with that being said, I know once public portion does open up, I do welcome your comments in regards to that, and we'll take any of your questions at that time, but I wanted to give you a, a quick update on where we are with that dam, and I'll know more on the 15th on really where we stand, because that really judges based on how much we really have to go through red tape as it, as it concerns DEP to repair that. Um, because there's more than just fixing the dam that's involved in that, and I'll have more, we are definitely open and available to answer any questions you have that meeting to give you a better update. So, you know, with that being said, I'm going to move on to the next portion. But again, I do welcome you to go ahead and ask whatever you want. And if I know the answer, I'll be more than happy to answer for you. But if I don't, um, I'm going to jot it down. I'll be able to reach out to uh, our partners over at Dam Safety and also to our own engineers to give a proper answer to you. So um, just make sure when you do answer them, you do want to answer right away. And just um, provide me your email address and our phone number, and I'll make sure I follow up with you and give you an answer when we stand with that. Um, with that uh, being said, I'm going to move over to uh, the approval of, of our minutes for May 11th, 2015. Um, does anyone here, uh, Jules or Lou, give any comments or, or changes that you would request for that meeting today? Approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. The roll call, please, Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Thiessen? Yes. Mr. Falcon? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Nikki? Yes. Mr. Unanimously. All right. Next is a very important thing here. We have our, um, our resolution appointing uh, uh, Nikki. Uh, clerk 
uh, she passed her uh, her clerk's test um, at the state. It's a, a grueling uh, test to take, a lot of studying, and I'm happy to say that she is now um, uh, certified 100% uh, with the state. So uh, on behalf of council and council, I congratulate you again. Uh, job well done. Uh, <laughs> As well, um, you know, we joke uh, with you sometimes, uh, you know, think you're wrong sometimes, but saying this is the way we should do things and not do things. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 but usually I'm sorry. Right, so. she, <laughs> she knows what she's doing. She's, she, she, she's definitely an asset to the township, and I'm, I'm glad that we made the right decision hiring her a year ago. So, again, um, another continuation of uh, welcoming to the township and congratulations to passing the test. Um, so, at this time, I'd like to uh, myself offer a motion to approve resolution 2015. Second. Is there a second on that? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Thiessen? Yes. Mr. Falcon? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and next, we will open up matters to be presented by the public. Um, members of the public are invited to submit comments during the public comment portion of this meeting. The Council for Swank to the Open Public Meetings Act will not publicly discuss personnel matters and may choose not to respond to comments by members of the public during this portion of the meeting. However, the council would give all comments appropriate consideration and will refer all individual complaints to the township manager okay. or appropriate township representative for resolution. Each citizen would be allowed up to five minutes to speak in order to allow everyone an opportunity to express their opinions or concerns. At this time, in an orderly fashion, let the speaker of the public portion of the meeting. I just kindly ask you to raise your hand. I'll call you up and when you get to the microphone, stick your name and address for the record. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, if it is pertaining to the dam and you require some sort of response in a timely fashion, I do request that you please provide the, um, your phone number and or email address so we have an opportunity to respond back to you in a timely fashion. Uh, with that being said, please, um, those who would like to come up to their public portion, just raise your hand, I'll put your phone number time. Lewis, I see your hands up. <coughs> I want to thank our committee for her new position. I want to thank our, our Maha for letting our uh, EMS level to 2725 have taken the fire train at the Mahani Golden. I think it's ever great to point you know, to the township and mayors and to the manager. Uh, you know, learning pretty soon to save people's lives. And uh, well, I would say a few things for my mom, you know, come with me in the nice, uh, perfect weather. You can tell her it's nice to see her out. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks for the <laughs> for coming. I want to uh, also give a thank to our uh, free the candidate, you know, they won a uh, uh, primary election and she won a uh, high school graduate from 1997, but shared the seat of She's turned out. Uh, Living in Boise, she won her primary election for her uh, council member or committee in Boise under Candy Cam. And uh, and uh, I could comment on for for our township manager who was working you know, a couple of days ago. Uh, a customer came. That's it. Your township manager is you know, it's a great guy. He's a uh, he like his card, I mean, he's a, a very great person from two different person. I know if I came from Manhattan, but you know, they, they say something good about you. And uh, and I appreciate, I mean, uh, like the uh, EMS, it, 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 uh, trained by, you know, Jason Card, and his kid was there, they were the EMS. And I have three questions on the, uh, the agenda. Agenda uh, Revolution 2015, 82, 83, and 88. So, <clears throat> 2015, 82 is uh, an insertion of money into the budget. We were awarded a grant from uh, NJDOT to resurface Hemlock and Front Streets. So, that's the project that we're going to be underlaying that I'm describing. The more so of that. Uh, grant money is going into the budget. The uh, 2015 is what we do every year is to get a ticket mobilization. And again, yeah, that was also a revenue coming in to uh, provide that program. What was the last one? Uh, 88. 
88. Mr. Mayor, if I could address that. Yeah, go right ahead. The, um, the TRF is the uh, developer for the um, uh, Parker Green area down in the West Grand Cove Street development area. That's where you'll be living those. And um, the, there's three, now four stages of development for that. The first stage, the township essentially caused to be funded. And um, if anyone didn't notice, the foundation has been laid. My understanding is the plumbing is starting to go in. There was a little weather delay because it got a little wet. We resolved all the other drainage issues, however. That's phase one. The second phase of the development, however, TRF applied for grant funding and it was awarded about $1.2 million. The HMFA administers that in order to close and allow the funding of that, the next phase of uh, 22. Uh, home units, seven of which will be replacement units for um, uh, some of the people who live down there. Uh, the uh, HMFA did not allow one portion of the re redevelopment agreement, which was specific that when uh, TRF sells the uh, homes down there, which the set price will be $182,000, uh, uh, any if the market goes up above that, uh, the township was to receive uh, anything above 182 under the pro forma HMFA had indicated that they would not allow it at this time because they said that they wouldn't need to fund it. So um, we weren't necessarily expecting anything, but if the houses had sold, the other 15 houses when they sell, uh, had sold for 185,000, the township would have seen the excess money over the base price on that. So that's been amended from the uh, redevelopment agreement. Mr. Mayor, while I'm discussing this, there is a, there's also the next resolution will be authorizing the sale of township properties to TRF Again, that's in line with the closing, the first portion, which is the corner of Grant Street and Levis Drive, the first portion of that, where TRF will start building once the grant closes, um, to start seeing the, the, the building of those next uh, phasing of the units, uh, probably within the next 30 days, I would imagine, but we're, you know, that's the actual sale of that properties for the uh, 2.1 million that the township has already received as a deposit. Uh, have you since that completely been done for the new hundred? The what? The sewage system. Sewage system? Yes. Uh, portions of it have been uh, worked on. It's not completed, however, now. As part of that, the MUA controls that, and um, uh, my understanding is that they staged in the, uh, the sewer mains, I believe, uh, all along Lettuce Drive, and then the laterals will be put in. Yeah, yeah I guess uh, I'm proud of you to see progress. Uh, you know, coming out, coming in every morning, you see us uh, in front. And uh, I wanted to say one last thing. I uh, give a uh, condolence recipe to one of our Mahadi Rajadeh, who was current, was uh, current uh, Mahadi Rajadeh, but was living in Nunchin, Kamikadi. Rest in peace. Thank you. I'm going to say. Thank you, Louis. And Mr. Mayor, just to add it, my understanding is um, that those first four units are scheduled to be completed about. August 10th, and I'll, I'll put Mr. Curlin, the attorney for uh, uh, Firmware, who's sort of the agent of the developers, I'll put him on the spot for the construction schedule, but I believe that those houses, including Mr. Lopez's and his mother's house, will be ready right around the mid-August, mid, mid, mid -August, and that includes CO. That's, that's the present schedule. Right, Luke? Whatever you say. I assault with my attorney. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure, I'll stay on him for that. All right. Thank you again, Lewis. Mr. Paul Racing. Good to see so many folks out here tonight. Please continue. Good evening. Uh, yes, good evening. Paul Racing, Paul Green, C Drive. Some folks are concerned about despite my two degrees, five certifications, being a teacher here, being one of the top social workers in the state of New Jersey coaching two state champions in high school American that my spastic movements and some of my behaviors are disturbing. So I don't want to do that because to me what I say matters most, so I'm going to sit down. I have a few questions to ask first before I begin. Uh, in regard to the dam situation, have you interacted with the county board chosen freeholders? Given that you're a county seat, I would think that they would want to go that extra mile and provide relief for the township of Mount Holly, uh, particularly considering the aftermath of the Gardens debacle. You're doing great jobs trying to recover, but anyone in this room knows that the litigation has killed you. So my point is, considering the fact that, and 
just a few questions first. Considering the fact that you have 12, 13 properties in Mount Holly now, and Jules is pretty close to 13, that are county owned by the Board of, Account, Board of Chosen Freeholders, of which we elect and pay taxes to, they have not done nearly enough to address downtown through the creation of a parking facility that you could utilize on a corner of what used to be buzzes, which would alleviate the issues behind, which is now being used for parking, because you have the two-hour limit. You have limited parking downtown, so this is one way directly that the County Board of Chosen Freeholders could give back to the residents of Mount Holly, particularly in, uh, in, during this period of hard times. You're regrouping, you're doing your better best, and let's be real about it. You're not going to recoup for the next 15 years. You're not going to recoup until you get you start getting some trade-offs through the housing. And now that you've had a tax abatement, that's going to limit your, your, your assets that you're going to be able to gain. So I honestly do think, because you're a body that represents the township of Mount Holly, and the fact that the, uh, Mount Holly is a county seat, that our board of chosen freeholders could do much more for the community. Absolutely, without a doubt. And what I'm hoping is you take this idea and run with it. Uh, I have a question in regard, and first of all, I want to thank uh, your township solicitor and your township manager. Uh, I can be direct at times. Uh, I do show emotion, which is passion, and it comes from the soul, which is all good. But they've always been honest and candid and have answered every question I've ever asked in an honest, open, direct manner. Gentlemen, I thank you both for that. Uh, what I have is a question. I know what the original tent, intent was of Holly Fest in 2012. But I have a question first before I go there because I, I apologize for wasting council's time because I addressed this matter in December of 2014. And I actually asked to be appointed as a member of Main Street Mount Holly to continue this dialogue. These folks were the original members of Holly Stock. Over 85% of these folks that played were from Mount Holly Township. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want these spastic movements to create any conflict or misunderstanding. Uh, were from Mount Holly Township and or Burlington County. That is no longer the case. So before I go any further, I apologize because I wasn't able to get in the door to address the issue as a Mount Holly resident. Why? I don't know. I'm hoping that changes. But my point is this. What I need to know is how many, or if, how much money has the township of Mount Holly allotted to Main Street Mount Holly specifically targeted for Holly Stock 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015? One, and two, have you, have, do you have on record receipts for money that was, that was spent for this event? Now, I don't know where to go from there, but if in fact Township Council was providing taxpayers money for this event, then I shall proceed. Please help me. All right, as far as I know, the only support we've done with Holly Stock is the, uh, the policing and staffing for the event. We haven't done anything. You have not provided any money to Main right. Street. That was all fundraising mm -hmm. opportunities for Main Street reaching out for that event. Okay. We have not provided any financial. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, <coughs> what I'm going to ask Township to do, because honestly, and I apologize again, and I wish I could stand, but I, I'm no longer going to deal with folks that have a problem with my spastic behaviors. My mind and my ideas are formless. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to try to be as quickly as I can, as quick as I can, and and, and I'm just addressing ideas. Uh, what I'm hoping, and I'm going to be very honest with you, because that's just how I operate. Five years ago, I created Gracie for Change, and I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Within that five-year period, I, I've been able to help folks that cannot receive services from the County of Burlington, folks that are homeless, and folks that are falling between the cracks. Now, the truth be known, about five to 10,000 comes out of my pocket. But you know what? I've been blessed. And it's about providing service. It's not about the green. So in any case, the reason I've been so blessed is many of these original artists that are on my back have played for me over the last five years gratis for the love of music and cause. 
Now, I'll be very honest to counsel and all concerned folks here tonight. I promise them I will do my better best to draw attention to the quality of music that they have. Now, some folks here, Gary is over there, he has, have, he knows. It's a clear understanding because Gary actually worked with Holly Stock at one point before TV music assumed control. So what I'm hoping is this. I'm not here to address your issue because it's really not yours. What I am going to do is draw attention to Main Street, Mount Holly, not letting me in the front door because I don't go through the back door. I'm a Mount Holly resident. And I provide a service to the community for 51 years of the highest order. So I don't have to justify. It should be a right of being a citizen. But anyway, here's, here's my solution that I offer you. These folks, Eddie, Ak Eddie Lambert, the Relics, Big Bang, are four that are definitely Mount Holly based groups that are beyond just cover songs. So what I'm asking is this. As a way of honoring my commitment, I'll continue to do it. Because when you do something for folks that can't get help, and you're playing for a cause and your love of music, and you're homegrown in Burlington County, I'm going to do everything I can to help you. So what I'm humbly suggesting, and, and I apologize, I'm almost done, is through Township Council Action, because you do provide assistance. You provide police and security. So you do have involvement. I have no problem with Gary, but I'm sure after this year, Gary, you're going to have to come through the front door. Gary's not here tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but you're connected <coughs> to Gary. I apologize. Oh, you must be Alan Holloway. Or Hollowell? Right. Uh, well, in any case, my point is this. Establish a fifth stage. Holly Stock was designed to promote local music, Burlington County musicians. It was never intended to put money in the bank for Hebe Music. Hebe Music was one of the originators with Holly Stock. Oh. You, please, I need to finish this because this is a point that I hope the council will act on. I'd ask you to hear me out one second as you have gone over, but I'm going to let you continue. But with that, I do need to have a response real quick. Oh, in that regard, please, I'd love to hear. Um, one, the Holly Stock is a generating fund. Formation of Holly, Correct. not music. Okay. Uh, Hebe Music at one point when it first started was stationed in Mount Holly and in fact through the origination of Holly Stock 2012-2013 they did not move in 2000, until 2014. Right. This is so a fact. What they were doing is using oh. groups, please don't make this, look you made a statement and I'm just trying to counter in an honest fashion, I'm, I'm just trying to argue with you. Well, it is a fact. They really showed its bold leadership tonight by creating the fifth stage. The cost would not necessarily, you can do anything, your township council. There's a correlation between what you're doing on Holly Stock and what I am requesting. Please don't, please don't play me like I don't understand. <laughs> so what I'm specifically requesting is simply this. A resolution by township council tonight or within the next, within the next couple of months. I'd like to see all five members here because that's when it really matters through a 5-0, provide a fifth stage or an opportunity for the original groups that created this beautiful musical happening to once again have an opportunity to showcase their talents because CD Music has closed the door. Now, if you want me to go further, I can actually have these artists come and meet with you in a council no, personal. I know the relics. I'm talking with them. Okay. So you understand what Larry has said. You understand how Larry feels about it. And you understand how often Larry spends his time repairing Mount Holly's gardens and lawns. I'm asking council to do something for the community tonight. Or within the next month. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Where are you going, Paul? I don't want anyone to feel that my spastic behavior is misunderstood. You're not going to sit around for the rest of the meeting? Uh, I'm sure that if there's something I need to know, it'll be straight. Call the order, guys. Right. Run out. Did you hear me, Alan? I don't no. run. No, oh. you should. I thought I this is the third meeting you've left yeah. after speaking. I'm going to leave. Leave. Yes. Not to sit down. And just start this conversation. Uh, I thought I explained it, Alan. Conversation is over.
Mr. Mayor, just at one point, just so that there's no misunderstanding, Buzz is privately owned. I was going to get that. If there's any, you know, just to be clear, that would, that would result in the county, they would not pay taxes on it. Which, you know, I know we're all for trying to increase parking, but I think that you can have a parking garage, but I want to add a four to the property, so to speak. I know that's it. All right, with that being said, those who would like to speak to the public portion, please come on up and say your name and ask for the record. And again, it's for you. Wow. 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 I'm on behalf of Woman's Lake because I know you said you were going to fix the dam. My concern is the second lake, which is Buttonwood, has all these lily pads growing that really need to be out of there um, to restore it to its natural beauty. Our lake is the Arbor Lake, mm -hmm. and it has a couple of lily pads growing in there, which I'd like to see gone. That second lake has always had lily pads in there for a while. Yeah, so they lake. need to be gone. <laughs> It needs to be cleaned out. The that, that, there's, there's the one that I see has an island on it, which is the first one. Yeah, that's the first one, yes. And then there's a second one, which I call the lily pad. Okay, the first one's what you're talking about? The first one's the upper light, the second one's the button one. Mm -hmm. right. And what I'd like to see is it turns its natural beauty. I know it needs dredging. I think a couple years ago they talked about putting air rages in. And I guess um, what happened was... I think there's a number of Randy is brought up a bunch of years ago. We actually did a study back in 2008, 2009, did water samples. Uh, um, I believe the Domain Associates did it for us. And they had a proposal about putting aerators. Right. Um, but uh, um, it, the dredging part is really the... They can put herbicides in to take the, uh, you know, some of the lily pads out and different things. But if... And the same kind of goes on the middle lake. If you did, if you started with dredging, you could start the DEP process now, and I like it'd be years before DEP would grant you the the permission. Not that it couldn't be done, but uh, it's very expensive, and it literally takes years for DEP to grant those types of permits. Um, I guess my question is, now that the lake is empty, why not get something in there and get them out of it? It, it, it? And I'm not. I work in the environmental industry in general terms. If you had started that permit process the day the dam broke, you'd still be waiting for the permits. Right. Well, then, so what can we do to make it better? Well, one is funding, and, and, and the mayor's been dealing with that a lot longer than I have. You know, you're probably talking at least the, because uh, the million, did that include dredging? No. Yeah. The no, the, the million included um, the restoration of the dam, as well as restoration of the walk path, as well as any, um, Buffering that he had to repair um, for the construction of the dam on the side of the, the uh, construction vehicles have to go in there and do things. So that's what that included in, in the initial proposal. I do believe years ago, before it would have been maybe 15 or more, they did dredge, but they only dredged like a um, little bit of each part of the lake and didn't really do it justice. Yeah, that, that was in the early, that was before I was on the council, so that was in the early 90s. And they, they used to back up when they uh, just went on the edge and scooped as far out as they could dig. Um, but I, I really don't think they had permits back then. <laughs> well, I guess my goal is to really we can't just store do it now, the lake and make it beautiful again. Because it's really isn't a nice natural thing wow. so, beautiful things. We agree. This is why we're trying to repair it at the same mm -hmm. time, not drastically impact the taxpayers for doing it reasonable rate. Again, and I hate using the uh, walk before you run, but we got to really cross our T's out of our eyes to make sure that the funding will end up and, and do it in a phased approach, which is most affordable for the residents. Because, you know, when push comes to sub, if we had to actually raise taxes to do it all at once, we'd be answering to all the other residents that don't live against the lakes, and that's a lot more than the neighborhood. Right? But we're trying to do it to, to obviously, everyone uses the area with it, but at the same time, we're trying to do it at a pace that's simple for everybody. I do understand that there's some concern that people that have lake view properties, it's depletion and it's not going to be worth anything with not a view like Which is why we're not decommissioning it, but we're looking to repair it. 
appreciate it. You can make our lake beautiful. I would appreciate that. Absolutely. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time coming out. Good to see you. <laughs>
Yeah. I, I don't want to cut you off, but I just wanted to let you know I've already had the conversation with Joe Brickley at the county Great. about trying to initiate some uh, road calming devices over there. Great. Uh, my biggest concern is the, uh, the crosswalk between 7-Eleven and going to the, the Miller spot over there. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many times people just speed through that curve. I'm um, waiting for mm -hmm. a stroller or a kid to get clipped going across mm -hmm. there. Um, even if it's just putting a little sign in the middle, this is slow down crosswalk. Just having something there mm -hmm. in itself alerts a driver that even though the paint wear is being striped, that they don't want to damage their pristine <coughs> car. So they're going to slow down enough to be able to right. see the sign. Hopefully they're slow enough to see someone cross the road as well. So I've had those conversations. Good. I don't know about the Mill Street side, because we're talking about the side that goes over. It makes a turn up town, uh, going up by another lake area. But, yeah.
storm water management, uh, things come into the lakes, but sediment going in there upstream from East Hampton, with, uh, it has filled in lakes obviously over the years, um, development upstream. And also just storm water management of the property owners using perhaps too much fertilizer, and that fertilizer gets into the water, there's too much nitrogen, too much phosphorus, and you degrade the water quality, and you have the issue that has happened over the last 20 some odd years. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the what repairing buffers that were put in, but the repairing buffers actually were put in to, to try to protect the lakes. Um, it hasn't done a great job, some of it is overground, but it is to try to prevent the banks from eroding and more uh, sediment and soil getting into the, the water to fill it up. There's the only great solution really now, and I know it costs a lot of money. You want to get to lakes, but you're going to have to first dredge it, unfortunately. And put in a recurring bucket. It doesn't have to be high like some of the areas are now, so you can still be accessible. It can be beautiful, it can be low level, but as long as deep rooted plants are there to prevent the banks from actually eroding back into the lakes, and then put in the aeration system. The reason the aeration system, one of the reasons the aeration system wasn't put in, and I actually um, wrote a letter at that point to the council uh, recommending not to do it because the lakes had filled in so much with sediment at that point, putting an aeration system at that point would we'll just turn that into a bubbly mud puddle. There just wasn't enough water in the lakes at the point to put in the aeration system once that um, grant actually got funded. So it would have been pointless because you would have just would have had one. As I said, it would just been a bubbling month from because the lakes were just too uh, shallow at that point. So in order in the future going forward, if the money does come through, you know, my recommendation would be to first dredge it, put in a nice riparian buffer in the area to protect the lake so that it doesn't um, result in more erosion, have areas that are specifically for fishing and access points that you can put in uh, rocks and whatever so that you still have them to prevent the, uh, the shores from eroding, but you can still have access to the lakes and put an aeration system in so that there is air in there and so it can naturally have a natural system. Because um, right now what happens and also try to get rid of or eliminate some of the ducks and geese there because they also contribute to the problem too. I mean, there's crap everywhere. That's nitrogen that you into the lake. Again, you're grading the lakes, and with all that nitrogen, you get the algae blooms, and you get, you know, just this current problem over and over again. So all those things combined is what has been affecting the lake quality of the lakes over these number of years. I just want to, I didn't have anything prepared for that. I thought you guys were coming out here tonight, so I didn't have anything prepared. But, um, so it's a combination of a lot of factors. Um, and um, I mean, they are man-made lakes, and they need to have be maintained. And, um, and there hasn't been maintenance. And without the maintenance over all these years, it's just slowly accumulating, you know, just an accumulative effect, and slowly degrading over years and years and years. And I think it was back in 1993 is when they did the dredging, and they actually ran out of money, so that upper lake never really got fully dredged, and that's why that island was formed because I never finished the project back in the original dredging back in the line. Because there's wildlife 
fish entry in there. Uh, once the dam broke, it was required by Fresh Wildlife and DEP to move the current fish that were in there. So I'm not sure if you go around and have it, but they came in, they shocked the water, the fish were at the top of the mouth. They moved somewhere else because the water would eventually sink and kill the fish. Um, so now that there's really nothing in there right now, um, the first goal is to get the water back in there. But in order to get the water back in there, you have to the dam. And the proposal, like I said earlier, was to do a full restoration as if it were, uh, if it never happened, mm -hmm. the walkway across the area, with the path, the new and improved dam. But there's, there's ways, um, in having this conversation with the EP, in order to repair the dam at a more affordable dollar number, mm -hmm. get those water levels up. And then once the issue of us not being fine for a broken dam and the water levels are up, so it will take a lift again, we can start going into it a phase two, which we're looking at, you know, restoring uh, the banks, looking at dredging. Uh, if we need be, you know, more expensive one would be putting another pathway or bridge mm -hmm. across the waterway over there. Um, we're trying to make it affordable um, for the township and right, for the residents by that bringing in and fixing that dam first. So that's where they kind of gave the best guess about 200 grand give or take, as opposed to 1.2 million dollars, which is more of a number. number. There's some grants and uh, money that we might have, as opposed to trying to raise 1.2 million dollars. Yeah. 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 For, for the 200,000 dollars, yes. Anything else would be a specific referendum, but no one's going to want to pay for it. There are grants that skew out $1.2 million for that dam remediation grants are out there, but they're for severity one grant uh, dams that are out there, we're talking big ones. We're not categorized as a severity one dam, we're like on the bottom. So um, we've been discussing with people who give the grants out of the EPA and dam safety. You know, they're there, and those have to apply to them. But for those that were in the severity two, they didn't even get funded last year. That's how many severity ones are out there. So for us, which are the bottom, for a small dam on the Man Lake, we'll probably never get funded, which means we have to self fund or find other ways to do it. So it makes it much more difficult to compare it the way it was with the life of funding out there right now. So that, that's where we are at that. It's unfortunate, but we are trying to hit every avenue possible to get the funding to get it back in operating as soon as possible. When we talked in October, you said you were looking at trying to reallocate some of the funds you had, you had applied for a grant already for the yes. park um, to do another splash park or whatever. Mm -hmm. and go that was declined. It was declined. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. And you also mentioned maybe looking at Green Acres with them. They also declined that. They declined it too. They said because it is a, a Green Acres is meant for a park refurbishment, um, not dam remediation, which is why there's dam remediation grants out there, so they declined it. So that's sort of part two would be for the Green Acres for the other part they talked about, part, just correct. the parks and the, the pants. And Once you fix the dam, then there's no longer a dam issue, and then you might provide a, a bridge across the waterway to provide more fishing possibilities, and the ability to take photos of walk with your child mm -hmm. as a carriage. There's ways to play it through the application, but they want to see it as a recreational asset, not as a water management function. Mm -hmm. So you have that more sense. I hope for next, because in the pathways, even. I have a huge research. I really do. I have a huge research. Yeah. Well, I thought you'd appreciate this little story. Your son came up to me a few months ago at a birthday party. And I remember you you came into my class in kindergarten and brought in tadpoles and frogs and frogs. I wish you could do that again. Absolutely. I wish I could too. So, all right. So, this is this is long time. So, we should keep following up. Absolutely keep following up. I definitely, I mean, you know, I always encourage you to come out. It's nice to see a full house tonight as opposed to five people in the audience. Mm -hmm. Because as much as we try to reach out, and sometimes it's hard to get everyone at one time, but we do have our new and improved website. We just changed the whole thing. You know, it's just a little bit different. Yes, it's kind of more to be able to find a way to make a comment on the website. You can find information for that. Yeah, there's no commentary on there. There are areas which you can email the members of the township or myself, but there's no, like, what I would say, open forum. Because then it would turn into just a, a bigger and faster privilege. And we don't want that. We want to be able to provide um, constructive information, the ability to get info. Um, and if you really want to have um, some more of a, 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 a engage us, you know, here's a good forum to do so. I mean, we welcome you to come out and do that because really, we need to hear from you sometimes because we try to make the best decisions that we think are good, uh, but also with, um, your, your comments and suggestions help us make those best decisions. Um, and the point that Randy had brought up about um, the maintenance of the lake has really fallen down. Um, everything's so overgrown, is that, that's not 
That's not tied to anything about the dam. Is that not something you can address now? We can tie the up areas. a lot of the grass and the trimming as it pertains to the buffering area between the water and the land. There's now that they're there, so things you can't touch. Um, we can't really go into the area that's now oversight to the dam safety and DEP with the drain area. We really can't even walk over there. You say even along the perimeter? The second one. Really at all? Any portion of it you can't there, go there, around? Well, no, there's areas we can, but okay. there's an area we have to stop at. Well, the fence area you can't go. Yeah. But, I mean, it's all things we, we, can, we can reach out there. and have to get, get the guys out there to do some, some, some mm -hmm. trimming and, and major weedos. In a good way, not to butcher it. I don't want it cut to the ground. Yeah, <laughs> 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 we have some disagreement on how to have a point that you don't want more of it. I mean, I saw people come a few years ago and they butchered it. Is there a way to take care of vegetation properly? I mean, it was a short answer, yes. But it was installed, yes. Yeah, but they just installed it. They didn't. Uh, and I think it was installed again many, many years ago with a green acre grant. Um, so there again, uh, you know, you have to be careful with what you do with that. And I'm sure we can clean it up. How long ago was that green acre grant? Late 90s, I want to say. Maybe 90 20 years? Yeah. Or 20 years? Sure. Yeah. And if you're, if you're pushing the green acre, it's going to be a year. Yeah. 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 So, that information you can't find outside. Oh, we can trim. You can trim them and clean up. <laughs> right, right. It, it does, as Randy said, you know, it does provide a purpose. Like, you know, to prevent sediment from getting into the lake. And the, the other problem that when we originally did it, like, geese, if geese are, they can't see over the, the height of the grass, they actually get nervous and they, they tend to leave that area. Um, so it was also a, a so way to a natural way to grow it. That was a natural way to grow it. I think we can do that. My backyard has 50 of them in it right now. Once they fix the dam before they fill it up, they're going to have to debris and all that. That's in there before they fill it more. I think it's probably part of the environment. I'm not sure. Environmentally, they want to have a couch or a pie or a pot. And you can walk in and get to get it out of part of the house. You know, we'll clean up the creek, we'll clean up the lake. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 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 Hi, Tom Riley, Five Manor Terrace. I noticed that the temporary fencing at the dam, a lot of people breaching around it. Going near the dam area itself, we like fishing, but the area is cut off. If someone's able to get hurt in that area, maybe we can put like a better temporary fencing. Yeah, can you look into that and make that more secure so we don't get any accidents over there? I know I saw a couple people post on Facebook about that, and it was definitely a concern. Yeah, it's not one as all. You see kids out there running around, so. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Brian Morse, 438 Crips Drive, uh, at the, uh, the end of, I guess, Buttonwood mm -hmm. Swamp, if you want to call it that. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Morse, M-O-R-S-E. Um, it's been over a year now since the lake's been down. We have a phone call the next week. Do you have any timelines of when they, they, which our expectations are? Bring this up that if you can. It's taking that long to get a meeting with them. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a, a lot of work uh, moving forward. But based on the conversation that we have after our meeting on the 15th, so the president's and the determination of what's actually needed, um, what the meeting is going to be about is what are the uh, minimum requirements that the EP will allow us to install to remediate the dam um, at an affordable amount. Once we have it determined, we'll be able to engage your engineers to proceed with restoration. So we're trying to I mean, remember uh, back when this first started, we were approaching. Uh, Green Acres to try to uh, divert some funds from our application to go over there. That took like six months just to get a response back from them to say, we'll consider it, uh, but no, no, we're not going to do that. Um, so if you go to the county, et cetera, et cetera, we wanted to go through all these things and it wound up coming down to the fact that no, we couldn't, and all these things take time for them to get back to us. And now we're a year past the day that it happened. So at that point, we pretty much said, you know, as a body, the time that we start, you know, 
figuring out what, what's, what's plan C. And that's what is, you know, is trying to reach out to our contacts, set the end of safety, uh, have a dialogue, go through that a lot of find out exactly what we can do at an affordable amount so we can want to get off the list of bad bands, get the board back in there, and move forward past what's there. And that's where we are right now. So after the 15th, I know a long time coming, but actually a lot happened between then and now. Like I said in the beginning, we probably could have had a bit more communication out this way. Um, the residents kind of had an idea what was going on, so you know, we didn't think that we were just kind of like forgetting about you in that area. But uh, in all reality, we're working every day trying to figure something out um, at the end of the day. I think we have a good solution in our conversation with you. If all goes well, we should be moving pretty quickly and getting that remediated. I'm hoping that we start seeing some construction this year on that. So that, that's, that's the goal. Street Mahali. We are a nonprofit organization. Um, nothing secret about us. We have a Facebook page. I would invite you all to look for us on Facebook. Uh, we meet the third Monday of every month at six o'clock at the Burlington County Lyceum, which is the Mount Holly Library. Um, sometimes we vary that, but if we do, we put it on our Facebook page. We also have a website that's just been fully <coughs> revamped. Um, we are nonprofit. We're a hundred percent volunteer. Um, we do things to bring people to Mount Holly, to draw attention to Mount Holly, to make this town a destination. Um, I've never been paid a cent for anything I've ever done. Um, we work with the council, but we don't get any money from the township. That doesn't mean we don't work with them, though, because we have to coordinate with what's going on. Um, I've been on the Holly Stock Committee since 2012. And since I'm the only person here, besides the other gentleman wearing a hollow stuff shirt, <laughs> I felt that I should speak. Um, and I, I, have, I actually don't know Mr. Bracey. I've never seen him at any, um, I, I've never really encountered him before, other than what I've seen on Facebook. Um, but I, you know, I have been on the Holly Stock Committee since 2012. Um, People had left the committee and they looked for other volunteers to help fill in so that we could still make it happen. It has become a vital part of our community because there's over 40 bands and it brings people from all over. People are coming and getting hotel rooms to stay the weekend. It is a pretty big event and we've been meeting for over six months already in working with this and uh, screening bands no businesses make any money. On the contrary, we ask them to help us sponsor the event because it is meant to benefit our town. So please, if you're not familiar with Main Street Mount Holly, we're not a secret and we don't want to be. We are here and we are trying to make a difference. Our, meet, our board meetings are always the third Monday, 6 o'clock, okay? And, um, you know, I encourage you to find out a little bit more about us. Volunteer. We could always use volunteer um, for everything. We are always looking for people to help out. And half the people in this room I'm friends with because I've been volunteering with them for almost six years. And I'm really, like, thrilled about that. You know what I mean? So um, so I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you to the council. And uh, thank you for all you're doing. Thank you, Holly. And I, I, I saw you had a hand raised, so I'll definitely bring up there, but just to follow what Holly said. You know, every event that we have in town, whether it's Main Street, you know, Holly's sponsored, like Holly's stuff to bring people in, or something that the township does, like the July 3rd fireworks that we're having coming up soon, or, you know, like, you know, Sailing, the, you know, the, the, the car show didn't work out this year, we're looking to do something more in the fall this year, as opposed to in May, kind of bring that back in here, we have a good to do that. Uh, but, you know, long story short, is, we do what we can in conjunction with the volunteer groups in the township and other areas. We have a bike race coming up soon. It's going to be the 1st of August. That um, is a group that's coming in. We're going to have 200 bicyclists in town. And they're, they're, they're bringing people in town. And they want to start doing something 
like uh, they do with the county where they bike the farm, they go the farm to shopping. They want to do a, a bike to town when they go into town to grow the county and bring awareness to the shops and the merchants and the services that all these towns have. They may not otherwise know that the people live there. It, it wouldn't be without a conjunction of a working relationship between these nonprofit groups and individuals and, and, and the working town council that is open to communication and some change and back and forth to make that happen. So again, and uh, I know there was a lot of probably you know, some negativity that was here in the beginning of the, of the public portion of, of the meeting, but at the end of the day, a lot of the positive really outweighs the negative. There's the township. We are one big family here. What we're going to do is make Mount Holly the best place in the world, the county, to, to live, uh, to work, and to raise a family. So, you know, with, with that being said, you know, well, like, we do need your volunteers through Main Street, through the township of your events, and, you know, with your help, we will make that. You know, like I said, the best place to, to raise a family. So, um, with that being said, I just want to uh, order Mr. Carter. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Pinchak, 127 Moore Drive. Um, I just kind of wanted to comment. I want to thank everybody for coming out for the dam. Um, I just, um, as far as temporary fencing, um, I'd like to see our public works actually go in and clean up all the trash that everybody has left behind from sneaking in there and fishing. Um, and I also want to comment on, I know they have to repair the dam, and I know they have to fix the dam, and that's engineers and all that stuff. But at what point does public work can possibly get involved as far as fixing the walkway, or doing a new walkway, or, I don't actually know what the walkway was. was from my understanding, it was dirt and asphalt on top of it. It probably should have never been done the way it was done. Okay, so I'm just, yeah, yeah, um, as far I mean, as where we can, public instead of saving some money, use our people to start doing some work. No, I, I agree, we, we probably can admit that. I think we just took on that thing using our people to save a lot of money. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but things as it pertains to a uh, waterway and a bridge going mm -hmm. over it, there's a whole other okay. piece that goes with it, which is an engineering nightmare and we'll do it the right way. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm not sure that our public works guys would be equipped to do, building a bridge across there. But um, we definitely. It was going to be the same thing. I was. Yeah. We have backhoes, we have excavators. Uh, other I'm stuff. also con uh, yeah. concerned about the concrete that's in there and somebody. That wants to come out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, and we would probably have already taken out the concrete now, but we can't touch it until we have a plan with, with PEP. Okay. Why is this fenced out? I just yeah. want to see somebody get a piece of spot oh. falling on because they go down there and sit down there. Completely. Yeah, no, definitely. Heather? Hello, from my husband. Um, Heather Corcoran from the Shack, 27 Moore Drive. Um, and like a lot of the people here, I've been um, a lifelong resident of Mount Holly. I was born and raised here. Um, my parents met in high school when they were in Mount Holly. Um, and I bought my home on Moore Drive. A lot of the reason because of the lake and the beautiful area that yes. I wanted to raise my family and be able to have us go fishing and go for walks, walk our dog, go around the lakes and this is winds over on the other side, um, take the bridge if we needed to. Um, and disappointed is not even the best word I can come up with. Um, like my husband has said, we you know we see people coming around with public works, and I'm like, how come you can't go there and clean up some of the trash in the area that I'm not allowed to go in? Um, there's a, a theory, and I um, I actually teach at the College of New Jersey, and it's called the broken windows theory. And basically, when you start to not clean up the trash and the small things, larger things start to occur. So this is actually a psychological experiment built in Florida in the '70s where he parked a car in Palo Alto, California, a very rich area, and he parked a car in the Bronx. And within minutes, the car in the Bronx was stripped because it's a bad area. Beady, trash everywhere. Um, the one in Palo Alto, California was left untouched until someone broke the windows and then it was stripped. New York City um, in the 90s, Mayor Giuliani actually used that in order to create new laws to be able to cut down on large firms by cleaning up the trash. When you look at that dam and that bridge, it looks disgusting. And there's drug paraphernalia, there's trash, there's all kinds of things there 
that it breaks my heart. I am afraid to bring my children down there now because I don't know what they're going to pick up or find. And that worries me that there's going to be larger crime or worse crime in that area because nothing's being done about it. And I understand that we have to wait on permits, we have to wait for grants and funding, but we can clean it up. We can clean it up. Okay. And we can use the resources we already have without waiting and waiting and waiting for two hundred thousand, one million. These are things that I as a taxpayer already paid for. <laughs> That's called cleaning it up. Taking away the brush, the branches, the trash, things like that. I, I can't believe that if this were in a different area that people wouldn't be paid by the township to go clean things up. Um, I pick things up when I go around. But there's areas there that I can't even reach into. But when people see that, they don't want to ride their bikes down there. They don't want to bring their families there. Because it's dangerous. And when things are seen as dangerous, that's when worse crimes occur. And that's my concern, is that we're waiting, waiting, waiting for this big paycheck instead of doing small things all along to make improvements. Thank you. Six. Yeah. It's on the signs. It's on every sign. Let's double check. If it doesn't say that, let's beef it up. I put the signs up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Does it say? Does that apply to Saturday and Sunday? It doesn't say that on the. Okay, so that's probably what I was. Yeah, just the hours. So we assume that those nine to six on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so we have a lot of people coming in from out of town. Um, That's with it. the development, we're getting more people in town, we have some other new events at Holly's talk, we have the firework celebration <coughs> you're talking about here, bicycle people coming in, and we should make it clear for them, because I have people even coming in Friday night with a group, and he ran out and says, I have to go with the car. It was 7 o'clock at night. So, well, let's see what we can do by getting some work it's not clear to people who don't live here. That should be something that would be easy. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Stop it. Uh, Cindy Riley, five minute tariffs. I had brought my daughter here to a meeting, like, it's almost five years. And she had asked about the clean up of the lake at that time because it was starting to get cold. And the lake has, unlike how it had been previously. And nothing was ever done. And we had Hurricane Sandy and the dam broke, and it just got worse and worse. But I felt like the one meeting we had where there was a lot of residents already asking about it, nothing was done then. And that was before anything even collapsed. It's like, is something going to really get done this time? Because this has been almost five years. Well, when we have no choice at this point, I can see it that way. But it was always uh, getting funding to clean the lake up is very, very difficult. Here we get funding and get money to redo the parks. We have all the parks this year. That's easy. Um, once you get some water, uh, the laundry list will be fine. It's very difficult. But, but even without cleaning up the water, okay. even if there is water, you can't see it. Like we come down, mm -hmm. we live on Manor, so we come down Briarwood. You can't see the middle lake. Are you that talking buffer about the and all the that, overgrown? Right, that, that, that should be the biggest waste to me. I don't know. You can never talk to me into thinking that that's going to be a good thing. But even if that was cleared up, it would be much better. I agree. Thank you. I'm sorry, what do you want to say? Riley. Uh, Bob Trafalla, 428 Cripps Drive. 
Two things. And, and this is just something we noticed uh, this weekend. And it's probably miscommunication, but one of the officers on Saturday was marking the tires, where he marked the tires, come back two hours later, and place the ticket. And he was, he was approached by one of the store owners, and he didn't know if, if there was parking for a two hour limit or not. So the officers, you know, it's not their fault, but you know, somebody's saying something to them, which is not true. Maybe the signs are confusing also. Okay, they don't give you the days. I can review the ordinances with uh, Nick, yeah. we can send them to the police. Yeah, let's make sure they're aware of what There's a lot of new special officers. We'll make sure it gets And they're done. doing a great job. Yeah, they're, they're all over. It's just trying to make sure we show a presence. Right. Sure right. They're doing sure. a great job. Uh, the lake itself, uh, I know you need uh, shrubbery around the lake to keep the banks in, but two or three times already I've put kids down there, they're eating smoking grass, they're doing the drugs with the cigar, they put something in the cigar, I don't know how the hell they do it, but, but, and they're leaving their stuff around, and I'm picking it up. But they're there because they got a lot of brush and stuff that's not going to be enough that they can hide behind. And there's no lights or anything, so that's a good yeah, spot for the spot. Eric, what do you think would be a reasonable time for you to go clean up? Let me evaluate that and look at some of the But I'm doing I'm news that, but I'm, I'm yeah. more or less about could be just, just, just to clean fact, like Heather mentioned, and I agree 100%. You happen. see what we're dealing with with, with downtown, pushing up the gazebo area, making things look nice. If it looks like crap, it attracts crap. It looks nice, you know, can you change around. So if we can, maybe, would it be fair to say that within two weeks that we have our next meeting, we'll, we'll be able to provide uh, an accurate time frame to be able to do that. That's fair. Can we just, I asked we educate our public works department too, because they, you know, they go with them over and all of a sudden there's nothing left at all. Like, you know, so, uh, you know, we're talking about a, a, a nice trim, not, not, uh, you gotta protect the animals that are there too, and, and do a nice job. Uh, so, anything else? Yeah, I'll just say that we have electric in the gazebo. Yeah, there is electric in the gazebo. Behind it, there is a panel, it's locked. If you open up, there are there is electric in there. Is that working now? It works and it'll be open for the events. Okay, great. Right. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're not talking again, are you? Yeah. You're putting your son to bed. Wow. She's got stuff in the record. <laughs>
being said, I'd also like to um, just note for the record that we're going to remove resolution 2015-84 off the consent agenda and we'll vote on that separately. Second. Second. Okay, a roll call please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Thiessen? Yes. Mr. Rebecca? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. That being said, we're going to go right to the consent agenda. The consent agenda has resolution 2015-71, which is a resolution authorizing the police to guarantee for children's home, 2015-78, uh, and 79, 80, and 81 for all regarding uh, power licenses at individual uh, residences. Resolution 2015-82 is a resolution providing for the insertion of special item revenue, as it was brought up. This is in regards to um, resurfacing Hemlock and Fresh Street. 2015-83 is the clear ticket. Uh, 2015-85 is the award contract for the roadway management database. Uh, 2015-86 is a shared service uh, agreement uh, entering into the property pricing agreement with the Wilson Regional Education Services Commission. 2015-87 is refunding some monies, escrow, and uh, again, 2015-88 is on the agenda, um, and is again the TRF uh, resolution that you mentioned. Also in that um, consent will be the bill list, both manual by vendor and all the department head reports. Uh, that being said, is your action on that consent agenda? Make a motion for the consent agenda. Uh, is there a second? Second. A roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Thiessen? Yes. Mr. DeFalcon? Uh, yes. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we'll have resolution 2054. This is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract for professional environmental services. Is there a motion on that resolution? Make a motion to carry out that Is there a second? I second that. Roll call. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Thiessen? Abstain. Mr. Falcon? Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion to carry out All right, with that being said, that takes care of all the business portion of the meeting. Any matters to report by the manager this evening? Mm, no, no other than what you already have from me. I would like to mention that the uh, shared service with the manager of the city of Fellows, I want to thank you very much for your working hard to uh, work with the developers with the Mission Center and Arrow Group. And uh, it's great. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I've seen public works do it in a couple other areas where, like, you know, they go into a, 
you know, some area that's supposed to be, uh, you know, manicured, and they go in with the mower, and, uh, and I don't want them to do that in this case. So you know, empty it a little bit. Probably more of a lower setting on the mower. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to me. Uh, I'm going to echo what I said. I typically always hear this as a community. Uh, we need to have you guys come out and continue to talk to your neighbors, other residents that you pass along on your every day and what you do at the hallway. Because, again, we, we can't be aware. We're, we're aware of the dam. We know that there's a huge issue there. But there's a lot of other things going on in town as well. And we can't see everything. So, um, like you mentioned earlier, I forget who specifically said it, but you're right. There is a certain responsibility that comes down to the residents and the community that's there to help fix in a little bit. And part of that is to bring more awareness to us when we miss things that are out there. So we do appreciate everyone who has come out today. We don't see any of this as complaints. We see it as constructive criticism and really a cry for some communication that hasn't been made over the past year based on the links and other things that are out there. So it gives us an opportunity to really correct what has happened and try to be more informative and more communicative to the residents that are out there. So we'll do a better job at that. And you know, we want to see more and more people come out. And you know, I don't mind sitting here listening to people because you know, that's what we're here for, to be able to hear what you have to say and, and do our best to try to work within the means and the residents to get the things done that need to get done here in town. So I thank you guys for that, for coming out and doing that. Um, and on a different note, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna advance in on this. July 3rd, fireworks. We're having again in, in, in Ironworks Park, both well, obviously Mill Dam Iron Park. They're being shut off in Mill Dam Park, so there's a section in Mill Dam that you really can't go to when you're up tall. Um, this year, um, there are gonna be a live band on stage again. Uh, we are having a beer tent this year. Uh, we'll be there. Um, we've been discussing and we just talked about it and passed the fire resolution, but you will be allowed now to um, go into the beer tent and obviously consume your beers, but also have an opportunity to take a limited quantity out of the beer tent and sit with your families at your blankets and enjoy food and have a beer without being kind of stuck in a little tent there. I mean, obviously, you're always welcome to go back in and stay as long as you want in there, but you only have a limit of what you can bring outside of the tent to be able to sit with the family. So we kid rides this year, um, some mechanical swings if they can go on, all free uh, to the public for your kids, bounties, etc., all that kind of stuff out there. Um, probably bump the mayor again. You know, my back hurt a lot last year, but it's for a good cause, so I have no problem doing that. Um, I think I hear rumors of Nation of Holly doing a 50-50. That's not happening. So yep. that's something that's going to happen out there, so you have an opportunity to put some cash on there as well, amongst other things. Um, I know we're getting close to it, but I'm still trying to add things. Oh, there's going to be a NASCAR there that you may look at, and you start every now and then. Um, I'm trying to think what else is happening. Oh, the Burlington County NASA van is going to be there, so you can see all kinds of cool space things with the kids and stuff, which is kind of cool as well. Um, other stuff, vendors, 25 vendors, food, everything from fried shrimp to probably uh, euros to who knows what. I mean, it's <laughs> food that you get at these events, but you know what, it's going to be there. So I hope everyone comes out, tell our families come out, it's going to be a good event like it was last year. Lots of people, you know, parking is limited, but it'll be a good event. Um, again, using the fireworks, it'll be nice to come out and keep on your calendar and tell everyone to come out. Now, with that being said, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Alright, thanks again for coming everybody.